What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it's as if before we get on, we look in our crystal balls to see what can be. You said this a lot. I'm telling you, man, if you're not watching this show, you don't know what's going to happen. We said this on O'Brien, said this specifically. None of those dates are going to stick. Because it ain't ready. Throw some spaghetti on the wall and see. You know, these joints are not ready. And they've delayed. And most likely, they will get delayed again. Brian, your thoughts on all these delays? So they're hiding behind the writer's strike. We're talking about Disney in particular. But let's run it down real quick because it's it's sweeping massive delays to the calendar. So let's do the Marvel stuff first. Um, although one movie is moving up, and I do we should talk about that. Um, Captain America: Brave New World goes from May of twenty four to July of twenty four. Uh, that will be delayed again, I think. Um, Thunderbolts mm -hmm. is going from July to December of twenty twenty four. Blade is now slotted for February twenty twenty five. Fantastic Four, which was supposed to come out in 2023, originally is now coming out in May of 2025. That spot was originally occupied wow. by Kang Dynasty. Kang Dynasty is now coming out in May of 26. Secret Wars is now coming in May of 2027. I will take the over in terms of years for both of those still. Um, and you also have Star Wars. We talked about it in light of the whole Kathleen Kennedy kerfuffle and we said none of these movies came with release dates and lo and behold every one of them has been delayed already <laughs> mere months after they were announced so right now star wars is trying to target a movie in may of 26 december of 26 and december of 27 yes i will believe that when i see it and of course last but not least the avatar franchise would not be the avatar franchise without delays so avatar 3 goes from 2024 to 2025 but avatar 4 goes from 2025 to 2029 that's more like it james cameron and avatar 5 <laughs> goes all the way to 2031. so that's what we got Jeez. the one movie that is coming forward i do not think is an accident deadpool 3 and i called oh. this too i said yeah, would yeah, they yeah. start moving stuff up that they thought was going to be surefire deadpool mm -hmm. 3 goes from november of 24 to lead off the summer in May of 2024. Short Disney. That's all you can say. And Brian, well, I guess we'll talk about that a little later because we thought we were going to get a cast of uh, the Fantastic Four and it doesn't seem to be the case. Brian, obviously you can blame the writer strike on this, right? Uh, and the other, I don't know if you would agree, Brian, their lack of confidence in these projects. 100%. I think the writer, we talked about this when the writer strike hit. The writer strike is very convenient air cover to rethink, reshuffle, get rid of things you do not have belief in. And right now, there's not a lot in the MCU that you can have strong belief in. You know, you've got, we, you know, let's put the Jonathan Majors legal situation into this as well, which obviously by delaying projects that he would be involved in, you are giving yourself time to see what happens there. Um, but there's no question, like, there's no buzz around these projects. There's no buzz around these movies. Who, who's excited? For, who's really excited for Captain America 4 right now? Like, there's more questions than answers about any of the Thunderbolts, I've said from the beginning, should be a TV show. shouldn't be a movie. Maybe it will be a TV show now instead of a movie. We'll see. Blade, we've talked at nauseum about the problems that that movie's had. Fantastic Four finally felt like we were getting somewhere. And now it feels like we're not. And these Avengers movies were not ready for, as is why we said from the beginning. You don't have a you don't have an exciting, creditable Avengers team. And if your villain has legal trouble off the screen, you got nothing. Yeah. You got nothing. And you got problems in the writer's room. We talked about Loveness getting fired basically after Quantum Media and not doing Kang Dynasty. Like there's not much there. It's not much there to work with. What do you think they're thinking about, Bernie? Well, this is where I go to the one project that moved up. That's what they have. They have Ryan Reynolds and they have Hugh Jackman 
in a Lethal Weapon 48 Hours version of Deadpool 3, which we now hear is going to include many, if not all, of the Brian Singer X-Men universe. Halle Berry on down. I don't know, Pablo. That is that is feeling more and more to me like something that they are trying to bring from the periphery of the MCU more toward the center stage of the mainstream MCU because they need the star power, they need the credibility, and they don't have backup. I wonder at the end of that movie, does it do sim something similar to how what to what the Flash did in terms of sign, you know, uh, tying this up in a knot and it be over, and then we can uh, move forward with the new stuff. Deadpool, you know what, Brian, is a good excuse for Deadpool Deadpool to destroy the multiverse and start again. I don't disagree with you, but when I hear that they're trying to make this like an ensemble picture with names and faces you've all seen before, doesn't that also sound like a hedge to like get all these people back for Secret Wars if it ever does happen? That That's all I hear when I read that in my head. It's like, ah, now they can have Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen on down pop up in Secret Wars for a scene because they need to fortify that movie any way they can. And I don't know that's like a great decision for the movie. It just feels like it's business. That that whole multiverse, I would have been, if I was in that room and they were talking multiverse, I'd be like, oh, guys, that's opening a can of worms. I think there's other storylines that we can do. You know, we can't, we shouldn't do this. At least not now. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, well, I think part of it too is I think there's a it's a classic Hollywood mistake, and I think Kevin Feige wears it to some extent. A lot, of, a lot, really. It was is bigger isn't always better. You know, I think when you do something to the scale of Endgame, I would argue in some cases it's a mistake to then immediately say I have to. And it's felt like Marvel with each successive movie because all the movies seem to be like the fate of the universe hangs on this movie has been trying to top what it took 12 years to build. And it's like, if you had gone smaller, if you'd gone street, if you'd gone simpler, like if you'd gone a little more John Wick and like pared this down, I wonder if we're having a different conversation because we're just not looking for the world bending issue in every one of these. But now you're kind of stuck because you've done all these films where you've tried to tell that story. You're nowhere better for it. So now you're doing delays because you have to. And like I said, I, I just, I'd much rather see no Secret Wars than a bad Secret Wars. So I'm kind of hoping oh, that, absolutely. I'm kind of hoping that some of these just get dropped and we just go in a whole other direction. Whether that's mutants, whether that's just like, we come back to, you know, recasting Iron Man or recasting Thor, recasting characters that have identifiability. I'm all for that type of stuff right now. I, I just think if they force feed us this for another three, four, five yeah. years, I think we're all going to be sad by the time we get to the end. Yeah, we're going to be. Brian, do you find yourself when you're flipping through the channels, skipping some of these movies? The recent the ones? MCU films? 100%. 100%. I don't skip Winter Soldier. I don't no. skip, you know, I don't skip Infinity War. I don't skip Iron Man 1. I don't I, skip I the first Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, I yeah. can jump into all of those for 10, 15 minutes and be very happy. It is crazy what's going on with the MCU. It is unfortunate, but we started seeing the little telltale signs of what was to come. And now we're here. Now, do we continue down the path that we're going, Brian? It seems that they have no intention of st stopping what they're doing and really rethinking this. Perhaps the delays are just uh, a facade for that, Brian? To give them time to think about what their next plan of action is going to be, but I find it difficult to have faith in Daredevil, Brian. One show that we've been looking forward to seeing 
18 episodes i don't know about that might be might be you 12 but then we get there <laughs> the box office will force change in a way that nothing else can and so you know we saw quantum it didn't make 500 million now guardians 3 is approaching 850 but that's also kind of like a that's a remnant of the old mcu and so it kind of makes sense the marvels i think i'm taking sub i would say 400 or less would be my guess so my point is as you start to have multiple films that are making money in that range budgets need to come down and maybe we should talk about the fantastic four rumor right here maybe we're already starting to see the reaction function of budgets needing to come down because it sounds like disney's playing it cheap with some of their negotiations and i wonder if it's because they no longer feel safe handing 200 to 250 million dollars to kevin feige per mcu movie certainly but Brian, the Fantastic Four, I believe, requires this sort of attention financially. Reason being, you can't, you can't do this film with unknowns. At least I don't think. I tend to you agree. Get, you get me, you get Brian, you get the, the the hardcore fans, but you don't get those new people interested in seeing something like this, especially now where we're just, you know, the fatigue is there, man. There is no question about it. So you got to get people interested. Adam Driver, I thought, was was a, a, a fantastic sh- choice for Reed Richards. And Margot Robbie, another great call. I was very interested in seeing if the other guy uh, that was that's going to be in Gladiator 2, oh, and how he was, yes. Yeah. But there seems to be problems because... Disney wants to be cheap and they can't, unfortunately, not with this, especially if you're saying you got Galactus coming up. No. Yeah. So I think if I had to guess what's going on on both sides of the table, one is I do think Disney's looking at the budgets and be trying to pull those in at the margin and seeing if they can get stars for a little less. I also think the stars might be negotiating a little bit differently. You know, when the MCU was blowing up, a lot was made out of the Robert Downey Jr. contract, which had a lot of back end on it. Yeah. He got that for his stars after the first go around. You know, Chris Evans most famously was it leaked that he was paid $600,000 for Captain America. Mm-hmm. But now when you see the box office sinking and you're an agent, you start negotiating harder for your upfront money. And I wonder if part of what's going on is Disney is offering less but offering less with more of a back end deal. And the agents for Robbie and the driver are saying, well, hang on, these movies ain't making a billion dollars automatic anymore my client being an a-list star i need 15 i need 20 up front plus i need back end and like disney's being like nah we're not we're not doing that i wonder if that's kind of the the nature of the conversation right now i don't know does disney now feel like because fantastic four is two years away they don't have to go to comic-con with any buzz and they're just going to really ride deadpool 3 and be like hey Here's Halle Berry, and here's Patrick Stewart, and here's Ian McKellen, and here's you know all the people you remember. We're gonna go for one last ride. I mean, that's what it kind of feels like because that movie's now one year away. The Marvels not doing it. They'll have a Marvels panel, and no one's gonna care. Like they'll have a Loki panel will be awkward because of majors, and then you kind of got this Deadpool movie is the one thing they can kind of promote. So maybe Fantastic, maybe they just feel like, hey, we we can play hardball right now because we're just taking the pressure off and we're not gonna show you anything. Yeah. Deadpool is certainly the distraction. It's a good word for it. Because of what this movie could be and what we may see could definitely tell us more about where they're going to head. And there's a lot of things I'm interested in seeing in this movie, not because of uh, interest, but more of curiosity and what it will do for the next iteration of the X-Men because they're doing a lot here. It, it, like I said, it really, to my mind, makes Comic-Con all about DC more than anything. I think that's where the excitement is. And I just think, like, Marvel needs a win. And, I, you know, Deadpool 3, like you said, distraction's a good word. So look over there, don't look over here. That almost seems like a, you know, kind of like a a, like a, a hollow win. It's like, yes, yeah. I, 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 I can count on Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman to entertain me. I'm not worried. Like, that, that will be entertaining. But it doesn't solve the root issues and i still it's not seeing any evidence 
that Disney is making. They're making the easy decisions. They're not making the hard pivots yet that I think might become necessary to really get us excited and, and back on track. And that's really going to be, will they, are they willing to let the multiverse go without completing it? Because I actually think that's the best long-term decision right now. Let this be the George Miller uh, storyline that you were going for that never got done. Let this be the Superman. Let, let this be those things. You know, it was a good attempt. Um, we were filling yourselves and hey, that happens. But now it's time to get back to reality if you want to continue doing this on a high level and really be in, 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 in this place where everybody was filling everything that you were doing. Mm -hmm. Now, even the good stuff is like, I don't care. You know, we don't want this to turn into uh, Equilibrium, a fantastic movie that was forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would hope it's as good as that. If they, if they have some action as good as that movie, then we, we might actually be in good shape. Like if Blade has some action as good as that movie, we're in good shape. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian, if I told you one, this last thing and then we'll move on, this sort of falls in line with some of the things we were talking about with regards to firing James, uh, Kevin Feige and all that stuff. But if I had told you all this time, like, listen, man, Kevin Feige may be the one in front of all this, but it's James Gunn that's really driving this whole MCU <laughs> storyline and the ideas and, and, and the notes on the side is his thoughts that are really uh, uh, creating this MCU universe. Look at Guardians of the Galaxy three, Brian. I think that is. I know what you're talking about. The story that like James Gunn used to give notes on all these other projects. You know, you know, I th you know who I think that really underrates though unfairly is I think it underrates the writing combination of Marcus and McFeely and the direction of the Russo brothers. Mm -hmm. Marcus and McFeely don't get talked about. But look at what they wrote. Yeah. I mean, they wrote Winter Soldier. They wrote Infinity War. They wrote Endgame. And they paired with the Russo brothers on all of those projects. And I would point out to you, the Russo brothers went on to sign all these big deals. Their output has been very inconsistent. Gray Man, Citadel, Extraction is pretty good. They've been very up and down without Marcus and McFeely writing for them. They lost their they, they lost their Scotty Pippen. It's like it was like everyone t you know together it was one plus one equals three apart. I'm just pointing that out yeah. because that common denominator doesn't get talked about enough when we look at the mm. greatness that we were getting. And Marcus and McFeely yeah. have disappeared. They don't work. They, they have no connection to the MCU anymore. Maybe it's time you no. gave them a call and said, "What's it going to take?" If you're talking about bringing the dollars down, the, the, I don't know how you bring them down if you got to get them back on board because they know they're, 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 they're the secret yeah. sauce, it seems. Yeah. All right. This is a business after all, right? Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the current state of the MCU, man. This ain't looking good, man. And the next things that we're going to be getting. Oh, God. Like the, the secret like evasion, the, doesn't, no. the reviews are bad. Relatively speaking, the reviews are bad. I'm like, I, how can I? What have I been? What have I been saying about the Secret Invasion storyline? Oh. I've been saying this for forever, yo. That they were taking a risk and doing it this way. This yeah, Secret Invasion had to be done a specific way and not be played with. And they're doing it in a way where people involved in this are no longer. You can you can't see the the performances anymore. And it's unfortunate for something like Secret Invasion, man. It's unfortunate. We'll That's talk about like it in a week's time. We'll talk about it. we're gonna get to see it finally. We'll talk about it in a week's time. To me, it's like seeing Zack Snyder stealing certain parts of Dark Knight Returns and putting it in in, in his movies yeah. instead of doing you know that story. Just do that story. Word for word. I don't care. It's such a great story. But they rolled the dice, Brian, and, and people are not having it. And people were re very much looking forward to this because it reminded them or were giving them back that feeling of Winter Soldier greatness. And now it seems to be just a, just a, just a colossal, st so far, 
in terms of reviews, in terms of what people saying, Brian, is really disheartening because we really had hope for Secret Invasion because we knew what this entailed and now it's uh, it's just unfortunate. Man. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!